Hello and welcome to Giant Mess, a sloppy sports entertainment talk show that covers New York Giants football, Mets baseball, movies, TV shows, and some life lessons and some funny stories mixed in for good measure. It's hosted by Giant Mess, that's me, the real cinch, Neil Lynch, on today's episode. We're going to recap the Giants' big-time victory over the Minnesota Vikings in the wildcard round. Six seed beating a three seed, no big deal. Some saying it was an upset, some saying we all saw it coming. And then we'll give a a detailed preview of the divisional round matchup against the Philadelphia Eagles. Will this be revenge for Philly coming into the Meadowlands in January of 2009 and knocking off a number one seed in the Giants that had home field advantage? Can we get some revenge for that? And then can we head to possibly San Francisco for another revenge game? With that, let's get started. All right, we had a feeling that this would be a pass-happy game, right? Minnesota's pass defense kind of stinks. Our pass defense, not that great, not much better, but we're around middle of the pack in terms of team ranks, defense ranks. So the onus is going to be on Daniel Jones, right? First playoff game of his career. How is he going to respond under the the bright lights? Big spot. And uh, yeah, he did, big time. I don't know that you can have anything to gripe about with Daniel Jones. I mean, 300 plus passing yards, 78 rushing yards, two touchdowns. Like, it's just, you couldn't have asked for a better performance from him. I think he had maybe two throws that he would have liked to have back, maybe three. Um, But played a smart game, didn't turn the ball over, did get sacked three times, but one of those was kind of a we're running out the clock situation. So, Let's just take the sack and we'll we'll take the clock, if you will. I think the big concern coming in for our Giants defense was, can we stop Justin Jefferson, who had like a bajillion catches for a bajillion yards in the first game? Can we stop their screen game, which really gouged us in the first go around on Christmas Eve? And can we stop T.G. Hawkinson? Well, we did two or three on that. And, uh, you know, that first drive was a little, you know, concerning, to say the least. The fact that we just it just didn't look like we were going to stop them at all, all game. And it looked like Justin Jefferson was going to have another 20-catch game for 200 yards and four touchdowns. Turns out that first drive was really all that Jeff, Justin Jefferson was going to give us. Adoree Jackson coming back after missing like basically the entire second half of the season and putting the locks on Justin Jefferson for the most part. And a lot of that had to do with scheme and what Wink was dialing up. They bracketed him. You know, last week I was like, we got to double him. If we double him and we double Hawk, we should be in a good spot because I don't know that KJ Osborne is going to beat us. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Ironically, KJ Osborne does get on the, uh, does notch a touchdown, but ultimately he wasn't killing us, killing us. Hawkinson did kill us big time. And I think that's, that's, that's a red flag. Right, heading into the Philadelphia, heading into the Eagles game and down the stretch, if we're going to make a run here, are our linebackers or our safeties going to step up and and cover these tight ends? Because San Francisco has a pretty decent tight end in George Kittle, and Philadelphia has a pretty good tight end in Dallas Goddard. Uh, so, I think if we're going to get got on defense, it's going to be because we can't cover tight ends, essentially. So. But uh, didn't get a ton of pressure. I thought it was interesting that Wink kind of flipped the script and uh, surprised a lot of us by not blitzing a lot and uh, relying on the front four to get the pressure. And I think Dexter Lawrence did a pretty good job. I think Leo did a pretty good job in getting pressure. I think Kayvon, I mean, Kayvon's getting held every play. (laughs) So, and they're not calling it. Um, You know, on the the one Vikings touchdown, he was just getting, uh, he was he was in a sleeper hold. Like, I don't know how you get out of that. You know, you get a reverse into a camel clutch for, uh, you know, uh, four leg, four leg, four leg, four leg lock, 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 leg, the lock, lock, the leg. Wow. My brain is glitched. Cool. So yeah, I mean, Kayvon's getting held every play, but that should show you that uh, he's getting pressure and, and making a difference. And I think uh, Dexter Lawrence is just a, a, an animal. Sexy Dexy is just a beast. And uh, Leonard Williams playing through pain and playing through a neck injury and giving us some pressure as well. So those three guys uh, have a lot of confidence in to get pressure. Uh, it sucks that we lost Aziz Ojolari so early in the game. 
to what ended up being like a thigh contusion, which I, I mean, I think that's, I think the same thing happened to Jason Pinnock later in the game, but it was like an ab, deep ab bruise. And like, you think, you think to yourself, ah, bruise, like how bad could it be? But like that, that bruise gets deep enough. It fucking sucks. It's a, it's a indescribable pain and it really limits your mobility and your just a whole bunch of, uh, a whole bunch of things. So, uh, it sucks losing a Ojolari during the game because I think that really um, put a crimp in our ability to get pressure on Kirk Cousins. However, I do think the reigning three guys, you know, did, did as much as they could uh, to at least make it un- life uncomfortable for, for Kirk Cousins. They didn't get a sack, but I did. I do think they did. You got some hurries and some pressures and some some knockdowns, and of course you have that horrendous roughing the passer call on Dexter Lawrence, which I, you know, I know I'm biased, but like that, that is for sure the worst roughing the passer penalty I've seen in a, in a very long time, if not ever. I mean, you know, it, it's not like he hit him late and he slung him to the ground, but it's not like he fell with all his weight on him. It's what, that was the first one that I've seen where it's like, Oh, so it's because he threw him to the ground. But like he's the Kirk's trying to throw the ball. Like we're gonna we're trying to make a play here, play f- tackle football. Ever heard? So, uh, so Wink didn't go with a whole lot of blitzes, design blitzes. He played a lot of quarter package, which is like seven defensive backs or something like that. So you have the seven DBs, like a you know you have the uh, I mean it was uh, pretty much all game. Adori, Fabian, Love, McKinney. Those are kind of your four starters. And then he was mixing in Darnay Holmes in the slot. And then with a little Tony Jefferson or Dane Belton. And uh, I don't know if what you're what you're calling Landon Collins these days, but he's a strong safety or a linebacker. And then you have uh, you know the four across the the front with maybe a linebacker or another safety. You know, it's just interesting, uh, interesting approach. And I think it kind of paid off. I mean you know, it, it definitely didn't look that way for the first three quarters of the game, but when it mattered and they had to put the locks down and the, put the clamps on, it worked, you know? So uh, Xavier McKinney played a, a pretty uh, decent game. I, I like uh, what we saw out of pretty much all our DBs, you know? Um, you know, I think Jalen Smith played okay. You know, but I think, uh, you know, that's, we, I was expecting a little bit more to Jared Davis, and I think he only had two tackles, but you can see, like, he's new to the system. You know, that's going to happen. I mean, they kind of, they kind of took the leash off against the Eagles the previous week, and they were just like, hey, just make plays. And then this, this week, it, it looked like he might not have been as, uh, as with it as he was against the Eagles. But you have to feel good about, what we did in the secondary, you know, uh, after that first drive, I think a Dory Jackson settled in, they bracketed Jefferson. I think we probably should have tried to double Hawkinson a little bit more than we did, but, uh, yeah, it was, that was rough because it just like, uh, uh, you know, really happy to see that, J- that uh, Justin Jefferson is not going to be the one that, that kills us this go around. Good to see that we're stopping the screen game, but you know, I just that's uh, that was tough to watch. Um, Hawkinson just just run a muck a muck a muck. So um, defensively, you know, I think we're coming into our own. Can't overstate how big of an impact Xavier McKinney and uh, Adoree Jackson made coming back, you know, from injury. Um, you know, not. Uh, they're probably, I mean, they're definitely not at a hundred percent, but you can see they're still giving us, uh, giving us, uh, flexibility options. You know, McKinney's not going to get beat very often and, uh, any catches, I think this was, was, was important. Any catches that were made, people getting popped right away. You know, there's someone there to make the tackle right away. And I think that's what's so important. Adoree Jackson is a very underrated tackler. I don't think he it gets mentioned enough. I think we think of a CB1 as like a ball hawk, knocking passes away and, you know, um, 
disrupting a, a, a wide receiver's pattern. And, and maybe he does that to a certain extent. But the thing that I've stuck out to me is that Jackson has an, is just flawless, impeccable when it comes to tackling. He just doesn't miss his, doesn't miss tackles. And I think that's, that's huge. And the team, the team as a whole doesn't miss tackles, which I think is, is so important. And it gets overlooked sometimes when you don't have missed tackles, but when you do, it's like, let's make a tackle. So, you know, it's kind of one of those things where, um, an unsung feat, if you will, but I'm, I'm singing it. I'm singing it from the hilltops. So, uh, Darnie Holmes, two tackles for loss. You know, I think, uh, he, you don't typically think of him as like a, a physical guy, although he does draw a lot of fat. Oh boy. Whoa. Watch yourself now. We're not in Britain. Uh, he does draw a lot of flags with uh, his physical style play. You know, I think Commanders fans will have an opinion about how he plays the game. <laughs> but I'd rather have someone that's physical that might draw a flag here or there than someone that's soft and that's going to let something happen. And, you know, so that's, I think uh, it's good to have Darnay um, balling out. Didn't see much out of Landon Collins. Um, you know, didn't really see much out of Jihad Ward. I think Jihad Ward is uh, is a, a vocal leader, someone that in the clubhouse that is, uh, you know, not going to let people slack. I think maybe, and uh, great depth piece that I think you know, um, not going to show up in the stat sheet maybe, but uh, definitely a solid contributor. Ryder Anderson, I think that's his name. Maybe I was hallucinating, but he was getting blown off the ball during runs. And I feel like it's weird that Minnesota just abandoned the run so often. I mean, Dalvin Cook had 15 carries for 60 yards. You know, it's four-yard average at a long of 11. But it seems like if you have a team like the Giants— and it's reminiscent of what happened in Super Bowl 25, Giants Bills, where it's like, all right, Belichick's like, you know what? We're going to rush like two guys, three guys maybe. And we're going to drop everyone else in coverage because we know the Bills are pass happy and like we're going to make them we're going to make Thurman Thomas beat us. And they almost did with Thurman Thomas coming down the stretch. Cuz it was like, all right, you guys are going to just go play back with all these DBs. We're just gonna run, and that's a, that's what the Bills did, and and it worked. It's just their kicker missed the <laughs> the attempt wide right. So yeah, I, I, I interesting that they would abandon the run. Interesting that on like a third and one, they would decide to do like a trick play. It's like you have Dalvin Cook. Dalvin Cook's a pretty good running back. You're that you you lack that much confidence in. Your running attack that you it's third and one you're gonna go shotgun and, and 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 listen the Giants did it too third and short fourth and short where they're you know they're operating out of the shotgun it's just like dude just get on your center and just go for it um but yeah that was a weird trick play I think the Vikings the Giants won this game but the Vikings definitely uh lost it in a lot of respects as well like making just bonehead decisions and mistakes. You know, I think everyone's criticizing Kirk Cousins for that the last play, the 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 last Vikings offensive play where it's fourth and eight, and he checks down to the tight end um, because he did have, I think it was Osborne coming across the middle beyond the sticks, and he would have been open, and it would have been a, a completion of first down. Um, the play before Cord Cordell Flott making a play, you know. Uh, you know, he doesn't have a, a ton of numbers in this on the stat sheet, but it's like that's a huge pass breakup, huge pass defended. Um, so I think it's nice to see his development and him coming along, uh, as we progress. And nice to see that we didn't have a ton of injuries. Obviously, the Pinnock injury sucks, but it looks like he'll be back for Philly. I would think that Aziz can rally and make it back for Philly. So it's not like we lost, we didn't lose a lot, a ton of on, uh, on defense uh, offensive side of the ball i mean that was daniel jones coming out party national spotlight postseason play and I, I, he really just has silenced a lot of the the detractors he really has i mean 
I don't know that 24, 35, 301 yards, two touchdowns. I mean, he was on point with a lot, with almost all of his passes. He knew when to throw the ball away. I mean, uh, yeah, Darius Slayton, rough game. Uh, I think he had, you know, uh, four catches for 88 yards. He had that, that long of 47, eight targets. He drops he drops the the one cross the one crosser over the middle that would have been like a huge gain. It would have would have basically cemented the win. You know, that would have, that was the final nail in the coffin. I mean, if we he makes that catch and gets the first down, the game's over. Um and he and he drops it. He there are a lot of people saying that a wide receiver one, and they're not referring to him as a wide receiver one, would have caught the deep ball in the bot back right corner of the end zone over the cornerback. That's a tough play to make, but yeah, he probably could have made that. So rough day, but I mean, you can see the potential, like it's just, and that's the frustrating thing about Darius Slayton, you know, is that he is quick, he's fast. And when he gets the ball, he's more times than not, he's going to pick up some yak, but it's catching the ball. Easy catches too. Like there's, these aren't, we're not asking you to make a, a crazy adjustment on the fly or, you know, demonstrate body control or anything like that. You know, um, I think we can live with the, that kind of inability to make a big play in the end zone, but we cannot live with these easy drops. You know, we just can't live with that. Um, it didn't come back to bite us, but it, it certainly felt like it was going to come back to bite us. Didn't it? That huge drop. It's like it, it, this game, in, a, in many respects, mirrored the first game on Christmas Eve because it's like the Darius Slayton drop is kind of like the Richie James drop, and then the, the Dexter Lawrence roughing the passer is like the 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 flag on that final uh, you know Vikings drive, which is like we're just these little these mistakes and big moments that um, you know. It's not like we've been making them all game. It's just like a, a, a lapse in, in judgment or whatever. Um, I don't blame Dexter Lawrence, though. I mean, like, that's just not rough in the passer. So that's, I, don't, I don't put that on him. Um, but goddamn. It really feels we have Daniel Jones as our franchise quarterback. It really feels that way. It, it feels like he's, I mean, they're going to sign him to a big, beautiful contract. They're going to sign Saquon Barkley to a big, beautiful contract, and we're going to have our QB and our running back locked up for at least the next five years, which is great. And then you can just you start adding little components and elements around them, little variables that are just a notches above what we have now, which we I don't think we're that far off. I mean, like Isaiah Hodgins, eight catches, 105 yards, and a touchdown. He had a long of 32 on nine targets, eight of nine catch, eight of nine catch rate. I mean, that's like awesome. You know, the guy does not usually typically drop the ball. Um, I think the one incompletion, it was like ju the Jones just missed it. You know, it just overthrew him a little bit, was out of his reach. But, you know, you see, it's just nice to see a receiver with awareness, dude. And the fact that he's playing on a bum ankle. I don't know if you saw that photo, but like swollen, bruised ankle coming into the game. He's like, apologies if I wasn't running as fast as I usually do. This is what I was dealing with. And it's like, holy crap. Um, and you know, everyone has their bumps and bruises, but like, it's just gutsy, tough, gritty. Kenny Galladay is, is supposedly healthy and can't do what Isaiah Hodgins is doing. So, um, did, did give us one hell of a block though. <laughs> I think it's like, if we can get Galladay, just like, I think that's where he's at right now. Mentally he's like, I'm just so fucking pissed off at my situation that I'm going to take it out on whoever's in front of me. And, uh, I'm here for it. So but getting back to Hodgins, talk about the situa situational awareness. How many times have we seen receivers, Giants receivers, on like a third down, not go to the sticks, come up short of the sticks, and then they're going sideways or they're going backwards? And I mentioned this last week, but like he just has this um, amazing, and Richie James too, the ability to catch the ball and immediately get upfield. Like, and it's it's the difference of a first down and a punt every time. It's like literally one to two yards, maybe three. And it's just it's it's refreshing. 
and it's it's really good to see. And it, uh, maybe that's and I think you could probably pay some respect to the coaching. You know, the Vikings got out coached. I mean, I you know I don't know how much more you need to see out of Brian Dable to see that he's coach of the year. And I don't I mean uh, there I have the utmost faith in Mike Kafka, utmost faith in Wink Martindale. They just fucking know how to call a game. They know how to make adjustments on the fly at halftime. And they're out coaching these motherfuckers. That's all that's 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 what it comes down to. Um, you know, D- Daniel Jones, 17 carries, 78 yards. I'm not a huge fan of this 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 like power sweep thing they got going on. I think they ran it two or three times, and I'm like, I mean, I, that it, I understand you want to be confident, and you want to be aggressive and assertive, and you want to be play smash mouth football, ground and pound. I get it. That is like so telegraphed, <laughs> so obvious, and it's like, oh, all right, we're a little okay, we're a little too full of ourselves if we think that's gonna work. Um, it didn't. I don't think it really worked the way we wanted it to, but uh. You know, I mean, everyone's, all the pundits, all the experts, all the the guys who break down film, they, they've they all pointed out how Daniel Jones looks different, more confident, more decisive, and making the right decisions. Like, the past three weeks that he started and played versus the first three weeks he started and played, I mean, that was the, the main gripe, right, that we had was... Look at Jones. He's running into sacks. He's pulling the ball down. He's not keeping his eyes up. Uh, you know, not picking good lanes and uh, you know, throwing the ball away when he doesn't need to. Not seeing open guys. There's none that that's just not happening the past two three games that he started and played. It's just not. He's making quick decisions and he's saying and he's spot and he's he's seeing he's he's saying okay read one's not there read two's not there, all right. And he picks the right lane to run as well, which I think is is key. So, um, and I know people wanted us to run more with Barkley. He only had nine carries, 53 yards, uh, and a long of 28. He had two rushing touchdowns. I mean, that 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 first rushing touchdown he had was like poetry. It was a work of art. It was master a masterpiece. I mean, there were just offensive linemen throwing guys aside and Barkley didn't need to make too many moves and he just cut through the defense like butter. It was just like it was so smooth and and it, and and that to me when I saw that run, that touchdown, I was like we have a ball game. Like we're going to we're going to fight to the end. Like this is not going to be this is not a fluke. Um we got things under control and I I feel good about our prospects. Um <sighs> His second touchdown was just straight beast mode, dude. Like, uh, just muscling into the end zone. I think Dalvin Tomlinson, former Giant, who's like 6'4", 300, took, he, he went for a ride. I mean, it's just like insane, the, the kind of power that Barkley has. And, and, I mean, night and day. Night and day when he is fully healthy. Night and day. When he's got the neck, when he's got the shoulder, when he's got an ankle, he's got it's just he's not the same explosive player. I friggin' love that spin move he has. He only really breaks it out against the Vikings, which is interesting, but <laughs> when he does it, it's just like, oh my God, how do you tackle that? I don't know how you tackle him in general, but like when he's spinning like that, it's just, you know, uh it's just, it's, just, it's a work of art. So um, you know, only nine carries. But, like, the pass was – I can understand if, you know, we only threw – if uh, it was, like, the Tom Brady and the Buccaneers throwing 66 times because they don't have – they're down multiple scores. They don't have a friggin' run game to speak of. We were having tremendous success through the air. So, you know, use the run sparingly, efficiently, and effectively, which I think we did to a T. And Matt Breida, I mean, Jesus, you know. I know it's, you look at the box score, three carries, eight yards, but that third and one on like a, what was it, pony package jet sweep type thing, 
and he had to break like two or three tackles just to get a yard and he got it. Like I had someone compare it to the Mark Ingram catch in Super Bowl 25. I wouldn't go that far, but that's a big, big moment in that game. You know, if they don't pick up that first down. It's uh, it could go, it could go sideways. So really uh, happy that Matt Breida is with the giants. I think, uh, you know, again, he's not putting up these eye popping numbers that are going to, that are going to jump out at you, but He's just a good depth piece, and he gives you uh, extra versatility, an extra threat. You know, I think uh, I, f- I forget his name, but he was talking about the pony package where it's both Brita and Barkley on the field. It's a package that I friggin' love. It's magical, my friends. And I, I'd like to see more of that. They did a lot more, uh, I guess they call it 11 personnel, you know, spreading it out. And uh, I like that. I mean, there was there wasn't a, a ton to dislike in this game from an offensive standpoint. I think everyone, you know, uh, did their part and looked good. You know, um, I mean, people that are honestly, I, it's <laughs> you know, I feel bad for Vikings fans. Like I, I, I do, and I, I'm I'm sure there's no none of them are listening to this or watching this, but I do think that. Um, they, I, I do feel for them because it's been a long time since they've had, since they've gone to the Super Bowl or have ever had a, a postseason run. I think uh, ninety eight was probably the last time they had a deep run, and you know they ended up losing to the friggin' uh, Falcons because their kicker stinks. <laughs> kicker stinks. I mean, he's a Hall of Famer, but that's besides the point. <laughs> um, you know, I. I know that some people are thinking, I mean, you know, eight, eight game winning drives, eight fourth quarter comebacks. That was double the nearest team. And I think the Giants were next with like four game winning drives or five game winning drives and fourth quarter comebacks. Um, but it was interesting coming to this game. Like you just, you just, it was this feeling that everyone thought they were fraudulent, that they were frauds, mostly because of their defense, you know? So it's like if their defense gets better, they're right back in the thick of things. The problem is I think that they are going to run into some salary cap issues. And so I don't think they're going to be able to uh, fortify or bolster that defense like they should. I still think they're a playoff team. It's just I don't know that they, they're going to have the ability to uh, to improve their defense. I mean, their offense is like, you know, I mean, Kirk was 31 to 39, 273 yards. Two touchdowns, 112 rating. Wasn't sacked, didn't throw a pick, although, I mean, Jesus, can we please hold on to an interception? Now, I know that's a tough, tall order, especially from Julian Love, who's diving to make a, a, a stellar interception. Tough play to make, I get it, but like, can we just hold on to one interception? <laughs> I honestly thought we were going to get two or three in this game just because, you know, uh, you know, we've played them once, we've got them on tape, we know what to expect, and Kirk's bound to make two or three bad throws, but uh, we couldn't really take advantage of it. Um, but I mean, yeah, Hawkinson 10 catches 129 yards on 11 targets, dude, just unstoppable, un friggin' stoppable. Um, but you know. Jefferson, nine targets, seven catches, 47 yards, averages less than seven yards a catch. You know, seven, you think seven receptions, that's a lot, but 47 yards is not a lot. Less than seven yards a reception. I want to say that's like one of the best, uh, one of the best productive shutdowns we've seen of Justin Jefferson this year. I think the Packers might have done a better job in one of their matchups with them. But I mean, that's really, I think that's that's the key. You know, because I don't know, I don't know that Am Thielen is really going to beat you. I don't know if KJ Osborne is really going to beat you. Dalvin Cook, seven targets, six catches, ten yards. I mean, that's that's exactly what you're looking for. You, you just you, you do not allow that screen to develop, and if it, he does make the catch, you're you're all over him like white on rice, baby. Still having some issues with uh, Daniel Hunter. I can't cannot stop the guy. And that's that's really the, the other major takeaway from this game is that I think Evan Neal still problematic, right? 
he's still not giving you the kind of uh, protection or uh, you know performance that we're hoping for from a top 10 pick, draft pick, first round pick. But, you know, they say the same thing about Andrew Thomas and he's blossomed into an all pro. So I think, you know, the the feeling is that Evan Neal can be right there uh, where Andrew Thomas is. And then, I mean, it's like, can't get much better than that, dude. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that's the Giants, uh, Giants win against the, the Vikings on the road. Our first postseason win since Super Bowl 46. Um, the curse of the boat trip is over, right? I guess. Now that we've won a postseason game since that happened, like we don't have to talk about the freaking boat trip anymore, which is fantastic. And now we can set our sights on the Philadelphia Eagles Saturday night, 8 15 p.m. at the link in Philadelphia. I feel really good about this game. I know that uh, third time's a charm. I really do think that. Uh, people are making comparisons to the 07 team that lost twice to the Cowboys in the regular season. We go to the uh, number one seeded Cowboys in Dallas when we pull off the upset. Is something similar in the works here? It's possible. Jalen Hurts had a week to rest, so he's he's a little bit healthier than he probably was the last go round, and uh, he's also probably going to put it all out on the line in this game. Whereas I don't think he was willing to do that in the, in that kind of as meaningless game as you can get. And I know it was for the number one seed, but it's like you know they probably uh, had a feeling that they were if they they could turn it on when they needed to. Um, but you have to wonder if he's going to be a little gun shy, right? If there's it's if you know there's uh, if he's scrambling and running for a first down and he sees guys bearing down on him, is he going to try and go the extra mile and try and get pick up the first down? Or is he going to slide short or is he going to bounce out of bounds? You know, and I think that's that's really the, the going to be the focus of uh, a fully healthy. So this is what gives me confidence. A fully healthy Jalen Hurts uh, would would make me pause and say, uh, you know, he may maybe he's just too much for us um but the fact that he's banged up he's dinged up that might have lane johnson coming back from injury even though he's needs surgery but passed on it so he could play I, you know i think that's actually a boost or benefit to us i don't think he's going to come out there and, and play anywhere near where he usually can so i do think we get more pressure on hertz and the benefit of him being uh, a little dinged is he's not gonna he's not gonna be as uh, confident in his scrambling abilities, and maybe not uh, do as much damage. So whereas the focus versus the Vikings was on Jefferson and Hawk and Hawkinson, it seems like the focus here would be we need we definitely need a spy on Jalen Hurts. Who is that spy going to be? Is it going to be Landon Collins? Is it going to be Jared Davis? Is it going to be Micah McFadden? Is it going to be Jalen Smith? Who is that spy going to be? Do we have trust in Kayvon Thibodeau to uh, have containment? Because I think that earlier in the season, we saw a lot, of, a lot of like hesitancy from him, a lot of like double takes, a lot of stuttering. Um, other times it was he was being overly aggressive and not playing uh containment. I think that we've seen less of those errors down the stretch and we've seen uh, a more uh, assertive style of play out of Kayvon, but like is that gonna like are we gonna are we gonna get that same style of play uh in this Philadelphia game where uh you know I, I'm sure emotions are gonna be running very high. Um, you know, I I think we can put out a similar performance defensively um, in the divisional round game that we did in the regular season finale. I, I think that Wink has unlocked something with that scheme, and they're not going to score a ton of touchdowns. If, if they're scoring touchdowns, we're losing this game. This is not like a Vikings situation where it's like we can go touchdown for touchdown. I don't think that's the case. I think if we can hold them to a similar performance as to what they gave us 
last go round, the regular season finale, where, you know, they kick four or five field goals. I think they lose this game. I really do. Um, but we we can't the you know we're not going to be able to if the if, if, I don't I forget what the line is but like if if, if it goes over we're probably screwed like if we can keep it in that twenty to twenty two twenty three range I think we have a shot to win if once it starts to get to twenty four and above in terms of the Eagles you know point total I honestly don't think we're gonna we're gonna see a dub um. I mean, this Eagles offense and the Eagles defense, like <coughs> both just out of this world, dude. And, and uh, you know, they didn't look as killer heading down the stretch. They weren't as deadly, right? I think you saw, you can see the games where it's like they, it's like they're unstoppable and AJ Brown's catching deep balls left and right. And Devontae Smith is just, thrashing and slashing you know uh defenses uh across the board and then uh you know miles sanders is doing his thing but uh second in points scored third in points per game second in total yards fourth in yards per play second in first downs ninth in passing yards fourth in net yards per attempt second in yards per completion ninth in yards per game sixth in qb rating you know it really is a testament to um you know uh, everything really i mean the i mean the offensive line i think is an issue for the eagles it's been such a stalwart for them for so long but i do think with the lane johnson injury and and having some injuries along the front there and having our front be as close to healthy as you can be as a unit minus ojalari we'll we'll see how he responds you know um to that contusion but you can see how much better the Giants' defense is when when our our front four is is in and starting and healthy. Ojolari, KT, uh, Leo, and Sexy Dexy. Like when we have those four in and fully and full steam ahead, I think we uh, we can get to to Hertz multiple times, multiple times. So um, interesting to see if Wink will kind of do what he did. In the in the uh, regular season finale, where he did bring a certain amount of pressure from all kinds of areas, or if he is going to continue with this quarter coverage, we're going to drop seven DBs in coverage and see if our front four can get after it. Maybe it's a mix, um, but it was the lowest percentage of blitz rate, lowest percentage of blitzes, or something like that, um, that he had against Minnesota. So maybe it is a case of like, well, we're not going to, if we apply pressure to Jalen and he gets out of the pocket and scrambles, he's going to gash us for chunks of yards with his legs. Maybe we we sit back, right? You have that 5 to 10 yard layer of DBs of coverage and you have the 10 to 15 and the 15 to 20. You just have those three layers and it's like as soon as he takes off from the four man pressure front, we just collapse and and make the tackle. Um, Cause I don't think he really, he didn't, he didn't do a whole lot of, uh, he didn't have a whole lot of carnage in that regular season finale. You know, it wasn't like he was running left and right, uh, picking up first downs. So I think if we can keep him in that kind of stat line of like nine carries for 17 yards, I think we're going to come out with the dub. Yeah, fifth in total rushing yards, first in rushing touchdowns, but eighth in fumbles. And we have a knack for knocking the ball loose. So I have a I have a feeling that we might get a fumble recovery or two in this game. I have I have strong vibes about that. Where uh their Eagles offense is fourth in scoring percentage, ninth in turnover percentage, right? So they don't really turn over the ball that much. If they do, it's via fumble. Sixth in interception percentage that shows you that Hertz is taking care of the ball, not throwing, not uh, making bad decisions. Ninth in sack percentage, and so that to me uh, indicates that uh, um, you know I have a feeling that that's not going to come into play. I think that they're going to give up a few sacks, two, three, maybe four sacks in this game. Second worst uh, net yards per punt. 
an eighth worst inside the 20 inside the 20 percentage. So I bring that up because I think it is important. Special teams is important. It's a part of the game, complimentary football. We have a sucky punter. <laughs> he didn't have to punt much against Minnesota. It was only two punts or something like that. Um, but I feel like was, I think the Eagles punter stinks more. And in, in a close game, in a tight game, divisional game, divisional round, little things matter. And sometimes it's the little things that make the difference. And I think that could be the difference in this game where it's like, we're downing it inside the 20. They're not, you know, and if, it feels like it's going to be a field position game. It's not going to be this kind of run and gun uh, offensive, ex- explosive offensive game that we saw uh, against Minnesota in the wild card. I think it is going to be field position game. And so every yard matters. And that's where I think we have this slight advantage is our punter doesn't suck as much as theirs. <laughs> Philly is fourth and third down percentage and fourth down percentage. All right, so they convert. Uh, so th- those will be important downs, third down. We need to stay out of third and shorts, third and mediums. So let's get those third and longs, baby. And they're third and red zone percentage. So let's keep them out of the red zone. And I think we did a pretty good job of that <coughs> in the regular season finale. I don't think they really saw the the – I think they made maybe – they were one for five in the red zone, I want to say, in the in that game or something like that. But let's just uh, let's keep them outside the twenty. You know, let's let them kick all the field goals they want. Uh, Philly's also fourth in yards per drive and third in points per drive. So, yeah, I mean they're a dynamo. They're they're uh, they're a Tyrannosaurus Rex on offense for most of the year, but I think they've lost their luster, and I think our defense. You know, you think about the first two times they faced us. The first time they faced us, we were banged up. We were injured. No Adoree Jackson, no Xavier McKinney, uh, maybe no Ojolari. Uh, I don't even know if we had Leonard Williams. Like, we had a lot of guys out in that first game at home where we got blown, our doors blown off, 48-22. Regular season finale, we didn't start our defensive starters, and yet we still put out a pretty good outing. This is the first time that Philly is going to see our normal, like, intended, as God intended, starting defense. I think that means something. And I think that's going to cause some issues for their, for their offense. Not, not having seen all those guys on the field operating as one in Wink's scheme as Wink intended. And that's why I think Philly's offense is going to struggle. You hear it here first. Now, defensively, Philly's defense, their eighth fewest total points allowed third. I mean, this is where this is where uh, this will be the uh, this will be a huge test for Daniel Jones, Saquon Barkley and that Giants offense. Humongous test, because while I, I I did have a lot of confidence in the Giants defense heading into the Vikings game, the wild card game, and they to a certain extent for most of the game kind of came up short in terms of expectations. I really thought that that Giants defense was going to dominate the the Vikings offense or at least hold them in check a little bit more. Like I said, they made plays when it mattered. And so they stepped up and and shut her down when uh, they needed to, which once, you know, we haven't been able to say that much about the Giants defense in the past however many years, 10, 12 years. So uh, I have... More confidence in the Giants' offense against this Eagles' offense. A Giants' defense against this Eagles' offense. I do, I do think that um, you know that was their first game kind of back as a unit, as a complete group, in a long time. I think now uh, now they've got the kind of the rust off. You know, Dory's got this he's dusted the rust off, and Xavier has now gotten to a groove. And uh, I, I honestly think that the, Gi- the Giants defense will show up and show out. And they will keep us in this game. Giants offense has been rolling, but I don't know that we, we have, this is a, this is a whole new bag. I mean, the, the Eagles defense is just uh, tenacious, dude. Uh, tied for the fewest yards per play, third most forced turnovers, least passing yards allowed, fewest net, yard, net yards per attempt, under five? Tied for the third most interceptions, the fifth highest interception percentage. 
Seventh highest rushing yards per attempt, though. So I think the pass defense is just, I mean, 70 sacks, dude. They're first in sacks by 15. 70 freaking sacks, dude. And we have three to the friggin' Vikings who are not in the top 10 or top 15. I don't know if they're top 20. So that's going to be an issue. I don't know that we're going to have the ability to dial up these uh, long developing deep crossers to Slayton and to James and to Hodgins. I don't know that we're going to be, be able to do a lot of double moves. As Dable mentioned after the home loss, the blowout loss, like we had some plays that were there. It's just Daniel didn't have the time to see him. And so that's going to be, so do you go into this game thinking, all right, well, we'll just correct those mistakes and try again with these long developing double moves and whatnot. Or are you going to try and nickel and dime and pick them apart underneath, which pl- kind of caters and plays into what Philly has uh, has um, been able to develop on the defensive side of the ball? So, but seventh highest rushing yards per attempt. So, is this a case of, hey, we like passing on first down? Let's continue to, to pass on first down because we've we've had pretty good success there. And let's get into a second and five, second and four, and let's run the ball for two, three yards. And that sets up a third and short. And if we can do that repeatedly, great. I mean, you would love to see another drive like we put together against Minnesota. I mean, I I can't believe that we put together on Christmas Eve a 19-play drive that was like almost 10 minutes or something like that. That was 10 minutes off the clock. And then we put together a 20-play drive that was 11 minutes off the clock. Well, we got a field goal, and that was like ultimate blue balls, I think. <laughs> I was like, oh, well, that's not a good sign because like you need to punch that in and, and get points, more points than three. So that was kind of a win for Minnesota there. But um, let's, let's run that again. Let's get these double-digit drives and keep that Eagles offense off the field. It does wonders for our defense, too. I think you saw... Um, I think, you know, we were up, we went up 17, seven after the 20 play drive and then they did come back and score the touchdown. But I think it, 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 it does wonders for your defense. Sixth lowest scoring percentage, third highest turnover percentage. Yeah. I mean, they're going to, I mean, they're going to just, we, we just got to hold on the ball. Just do not turn over the ball. You know, I think Daniel is in a much better headspace. I think he feels a lot more confidence in his receiving crew and his and in his offensive line. I think Kafka feels more confidence in him and is, and is tailoring, uh, opening up the passing game a little bit more for him. Um, I just don't want to see too many designed runs for him because I don't know that that's going to work. I think what works for Daniel in this Giants offense is Quick read, quick read, scramble, either throw on the run or pick pick up yards with your feet. Lowest air yards per attempt. Tie for the second lowest yards per co- completion, lowest yards per game, and third lowest QB rating. I mean, this Eagles defense is just unbelievable, dude. But, you know, may I remind you, the Giants went into San Francisco with Eli Manning in January of 2012. And they faced the 49ers defense that was like, I want to say tops in the league, at least tops in the NFC. And they th- we threw the ball so many goddamn times against that Philadelphia, uh, against that San Fran team. Not a lot of deep balls. Kind of picked our spots here and there. A lot of short passes to Victor Cruz, let him catch the ball and let him make a move. Almost feels like maybe that's something similar in the works here, where it's like, Let's just get the ball out of his, Daniel's hands and let's get positive yardage. You know, let's minimize uh, tackles for loss. Let's minimize sacks. Let's minimize those kind of opportunities and uh, and see if it pays off. There's second in QB hits, first in tackles for loss, first in sack percentage by three full points, percentage points, which is unheard of. And they're tied for six point, sixth in uh, points per game, sixth lowest, fewest points per game. So, yeah, that's that's the challenge ahead. I think if, uh, like I said, a fully Jalen Hurts scares me more 
I think the fact that he's got a he's got a little bit of he's not feeling himself as much as he usually is is going to be an issue. I think the fact that we're fully back and healthy on defense is going to going to you're going to see a huge difference there. It's going to be a field position game, going to be low scoring. I think uh, we're going to hold them to field goals. We might give up a touchdown. Ah, touchdown. And that's fine. Get it out of our system. But for us. I'm more curious to see how our offense is going to handle that defense because, uh, I mean, you saw what happened with Davis Webb. It was like he he uh, just would run backwards 20 yards and then throw it to Matt Breida for a yard. And it's like that's not what we're looking for. Um, but I would like to see us, you know, um, Kafka and Dable, I don't even know if they need to do this, but go to Daniel and say, like, pull the trigger. You have a tight window, just throw it. You know, I don't think you need to overthink it. You know, I think uh, you look for the mismatches. Hopefully you design and scheme to get those mismatches. I'd like to see us use Saquon Barkley more in the passing game. I've been saying it for so freaking long. And uh, it's it, it's just, that feels like an edge for us. The pony package, the 11 personnel, get the ball. And I'm not. I'm not saying th- like, I don't know. I don't know that screens. Maybe the screen game could work in this one. I don't know. You know, with all those sacks and all that pressure that they bring, maybe this is a game where we do dust off the the screen screen plays and say, okay, we're gonna let you rush and we're gonna try and take advantage of that and expose it. But time possession, long drives. Let's run the ball because there is a little bit of a vulnerability there in terms of rushing uh, rushing defense. They're going to try and run it on us. And uh, so you might see, uh, whereas last week was more of a pass-happy game, I think you're going to see more runs here. But this is the, this is the ultimate test, and I, I think it's going to be close. And I think we can pull out the win. I really do. I think we're going to shock the world. I think Philly is riding high. Uh, they were riding high until that hurts injury, dude. I think that hurts injury really put a dent in their uh, self-esteem and their ego. They're not going to admit it, but I really do think that that, that, that made some people kind of stand up and take notice like, okay, maybe things are not going to go as smoothly as we thought. Um, that stadium is going to be raucous. It's going to be wild, uh, and it's going to be intense. And this might be the best playoff game that we've seen between these two ever in a long time. It's going to be hard fought, and it's it's going to come down the wire. I really do think it's going to come down the wire. I think Philly is favored by like seven. It's like take the Giants plus seven, plus seven and a half for sure. I don't. I just don't see us caving in. You know, I think maybe Philly comes out and we get and they frustrate us and we get flustered. Maybe we do get down seven or 14 at one point in the game, but I think we could just chip away and fight back and make it a ball game and make it close and possibly sneak out a win. Thank you so much for listening uh, and watching. I appreciate you, all five of you, more than you know. And uh, we'll talk to you next week uh, after the Giants beat the Eagles. Let's go, Big Blue!